Hi, this is Tim from Tigret Astronomy, and you're watching Adventures in Arduino. Hi, this is Tim, and I have not done any coding for quite some time, and I've noticed that my coding muscles, i.e. my brain, has um, started to atrophy a little bit, so um, I'm trying to ease myself back in with some Arduino coding, and uh, I thought you might like to come along for the ride. So I'm going to talk about a few libraries that either I've written myself as Tiger Astronomy, or other libraries that I use a lot in my own projects. And the first one I'm going to talk about is a really simple library called uh, ta.arduino.timer. And it's a really easy to use timer for, it's great for timing human scale events like timeouts and user interface elements. So flashing lights, for example. And um, I'm going to write a very brief um, little Arduino sketch to use a timer and blink an LED. So we're going to write the blink program, but using a timer instead of um, just using delays. OK, so that's what we're going to do now. Um, I don't like using the Arduino IDE. It's very, uh, in my view, oversimplified and gets in the way. They have recently released a newer version, but I don't like it. I don't think they've done enough and they've waited too long to do it. So um, the Arduino guys have basically lost control of their ecosystem and there are many, many other better ways to develop Arduino sketches these days. I'm using Microsoft Visual Studio Code with the Platform IO plugin, which is a great, um, both are free, both are cross platform and it's a great way to get into embedded development, not just for Arduino, but for other things like Raspberry Pi and um, I think they they support about 2000 different types of target systems or something insane like that. So it's a great way to go. So I'm going to go in platform IO and start a new project. And we will call this timer demo. And OK, so here now platform IO makes this really easy. We, we get to select which board we want to use. And I've got a Arduino Maker 1010 Wi-Fi, which is an ARM based CPU. So we should be able to pick that from the list. And if we just put in here in the box Maker, and then it filters the list for us. So we want this one here, the Arduino Maker Wi-Fi 1010. And the framework we will be using, the coding framework, it will be Arduino, obviously and we use the default location so we'll finish that and this will go ahead and create our project while we're waiting for that i'll just switch on my other camera and show you the arduino that we're using okay so here it is this is the arduino maker 1010 wi-fi this part here i'm just getting my pointer this little part here in the middle is is the is actually the Arduino. The the larger part here, the larger thing that's shaped like an Arduino Uno, is actually a, uh, an adapter board, so that you can plug shields on. So on obviously with this small form factor, you can't plug a normal Arduino shield on there. So this adapter board just allows you to plug shields on the top, and. Um, the Maker 1010 Wi-Fi, as the name implies, has Wi-Fi built in. So this, this is the chip here. This is a, um, a Nina uh, Wi-Fi chip by U-Blocks. And this little thing on the end is the antenna, which is quite sensitive. So you have to be careful not to crush that. And um, that's that. As you can see, it just plugs into a USB connector. That powers everything. And I've got a little breadboard here if I want to make any circuits or anything. So you'll notice in here we've got a platform io.ini file and this is where you configure things like libraries and other options. So um, we get the default options here. Um, the, uh, uh, the name of the environment is Maker Wi-Fi 1010. It's, it uses the Atmel SAM processor. It, 
so our board is Maker Wi-Fi 1010, and our framework is Arduino, which which basically gives us access to all the um, I/O, the pin I/O, and things like that. So that's cool. Now we need. We've already got a main.cpp, and as you can see, platform IO has already put in the setup and loop methods for us, which if you've ever written an Arduino sketch, that will be very familiar to you. So what we're going to do now is install the timer library. So this can be done in platform IO itself. So if you look for the little kind of alien ant kind of icon and click on that, that brings up the platform IO extension. We can open the platform IO home screen, which is where we started earlier. But now we can go down into libraries down here. And we can search um, in the registry um, is a library called ta.arduino. We'll, we'll just search for that. OK, we've got ta.arduino.timer, as you can see, by me, Tim Long from Tiger Astronomy. So we can click on that and we can add it to the project just like that. It wants to select a project. So that would be the timer demo and add. OK, and that will download the library, put it in the right place and add it to our platform io.ini. And as you can see now, we've got a libdeps entry in our file with uh, name of the dragon TA Arduino timer. And that is where the library is on GitHub. Away we go. So we now have a library. So we, we can now go back to our file system to our main.cpp, we can now hash include, hash include, but it should be there. So if we now go back into the PIO extension under Maker Wi Fi 1010 and click build, hopefully that should build. Okay, and you can see in the dependency graph here that it's picked up that library so it knows about it. And the first time you do a build, it has to build the uh, the core for the particular board you're using. So it's it'll um, install all the um, framework files here. OK, done. And we are using 2,204 bytes out of our 32K bytes that we've got available uh, for memory. And flash RAM is the program space. So we're using 12,000 bytes out of... 262,000 bytes roughly. So we've got oodles of program space on this chip. And now that we've built that, we can upload it. And um, PIO should have detected that the Arduino is connected. And that will build, that will just redo the build, which will be much quicker this time. There we go. And now it's uploading. And if you look at the Arduino, we should see some light flashing there. It's a little bit hard to see from this angle, um, but that was our code uploading. And as you can see, there are there's not really any lights uh, flashing, nothing much happening on that board at the moment, which is what you would expect because it's just running an empty loop. OK, so now in order to use a timer, and this is a really simple library. Um, and so um, what we're going to do is we're going to write blink. We're going to we're going to um, toggle the LED on and off every half a second. So it's going to flash once a second. OK, so we we knew up a timer. So timer. OK, uh, we we'll call that LED toggle. Um, just like that. That's all we need. And we're going to define a duration. Now, um, duration is defined by the timer library. Duration will be um, LED toggle interval. OK, and then we are going to initialize this with exactly that thing it's popped up in IntelliSense, which is um, 
That's an amazingly good guess. I wonder how it's worked that out. Uh, okay, so we're going to have a half a second. So um, we have um, in the timer namespace, and that's what this timer colon colon thing means. That means in that namespace, there are some helper uh, constant expressions for just specifying timer durations. So timer seconds. Uh, 0.5, so half a second. We could also have said milliseconds 500. Okay, now in our setup method, we need to start the timer, and that's as easy as saying LED toggle uh, dot set. set duration there we go and then we can use the constant that we defined earlier led toggle interval okay and that's it's as easy as that that starts the timer running so once you set a non-zero duration the timer is said to be active or enabled rather um, and at some point when that interval has expired, it has elapsed, the timer will become expired. So in our main loop, we need to check for the timer being expired. So if uh, LED toggle dot expired, then we know the timer's expired. So in there, we can say right well, the, the once a time has expired it must be either stopped or restarted okay um, otherwise it will just sit there being expired forever or actually not forever for about 49 days uh, whereupon it will probably revert to being not expired which is probably not the behavior you want so it's best to always explicitly do something after you've detected an expired timer so in this case I'm just going to restart it so LED toggle set duration again set duration and then once again we can use that um, constant that we defined here so LED toggle interval okay and then what do, are we going to do well we need to toggle the LED state so um, we haven't really um, done anything to make that possible yet so up at the top here now I'm going to declare a boolean variable called LED state and I'm going to start it with the value false okay and then in here it, once we've det detected the timer being expired, we're going to toggle our state. So we'll say LED state equals not LED state. OK, so that remembers it for next time around the loop. And then we need to write that out to an output pin that turns the LED on. Now, we haven't configured an output pin yet. So in our setup method, we need to say uh, pin mode uh, I believe this pin actually does default to an output but um, it's best to do it explicitly LED built in programming by accident is never a great idea it's best to be explicit about everything so LED built in and the pin we are setting is, co uh, is called LED built in and the mode we're setting it to is output just so okay and then down in here we can do a digital write digital write digital write of led built in and the value now um arduino likes to use enumerated values for called high and low for, for pins um, so the way I it, it's difficult to just use a, a boolean directly so the way I do that is I use a ternary operator which uh, is, is the same in C and C++ 
and indeed C sharp and it is so you take the thing you want to test LED state and then you use the ternary operator this is like an inline if then else so um, so we're, what, what that actually means is if LED state is true then use this value so we're going to use high if it's true and then colon is like the else so otherwise use low okay so that kind of reads as use high as the value if LED state is true otherwise use low and it's in line if then else as an expression so that I think is our sketch complete so if we first of all go ahead and build that and make sure we haven't got any errors and hopefully it'll be a bit quicker yes it's a lot quicker now six seconds and then we can upload that to the Arduino and hopefully you can see the upload pin waggling there and there it is blinking our built-in LED is now blinking it's toggling every half a second so flashing exactly once per second so there we are there's our first Arduino sketch in platform io and in visual studio code using the ta.arduino.timer library if you like these videos remember to subscribe to the channel and give me a like and also if you do use any of my libraries in your own projects i would really appreciate you sponsoring me on github and uh, you can find me on github as user name of the dragon or one word name of the dragon and um, if there's any other subjects you'd like to see me cover please do let me know down in the comments i would love to hear from you i've been tim from tiger astronomy thanks for watching and goodbye